Hey guys, so this is the week 42 vlog. So week 42 was originally my last week in Ukraine, but things happened. So on Sunday, I was supposed to do a final speaking club and the speaking club had been agreed to before, but because I didn't see any announcements or advertisements about it, I thought that they decided not to do it and I was even given a lesson. But then I got the message at like 1.20 on Sunday afternoon, like, hey, what's happening with speaking clubs? And I'm like, well, I didn't hear about them. So ended up having to like um, scrap together, well, not even scrap together. I just went to speaking club and just talked to the guys that were there for the last 40 minutes. After that, I went and played basketball again with Sasha, which was also supposed to be the last time doing that. I went up to block a shot and I just freaked out in the middle of the air. I cut my hand, I messed up my wrist a little bit. I jumped and as soon as my feet left the ground, something just like went off in my head. Um, <laughs> and I scared everyone else because they thought like something really bad happened. Monday, I was just chilling, cleaning and stuff and Sasha came by with a pizza apparently he had bought um, and some juice to like say goodbye and stuff, um, which was like really cool. And I guess it was an exchange because I ended up giving him the TV that I bought here. Um, because, I mean, what, what am I going to do with it? So, um, a pizza for a TV, um, I guess technically I did win that exchange, but hey, um, it is what it is. Oh. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> so after that, um, I was cleaning and relaxing the rest of the day. And on Tuesday, I thought, you know, it would be a smooth day, but Tuesday ended up being a very, very difficult day. So Tuesday morning, I woke up and figured, okay, after breakfast and easy organization, I'll be ready with time to spare. Uh, that didn't happen. I ended up cleaning up for about three hours on Tuesday morning, and I ended up rushing through what was supposed to be my final lunch, and I got into the taxi, who was also here 15 minutes early, but anyway, uh, I got into a taxi and got driven off to the airport and I thought, you know, that's it. Like looked at the EOC behind me one last time while we were driving away and all that stuff. And then I got to the airport and went, uh, checked in. They said I couldn't check in online. Uh, so I just kind of showed my information and then went inside to wait. And while we were waiting, there was a service line that opened up and I thought, you know, maybe I should go over there. So I went over to the service line and I said, you know, I tried to check in, but I couldn't. And then she said, oh, do you have your passport? So she took it and then she said, oh, we'll check with German immigration. So they checked and she said it should be about five to 10 minutes. After about 45 minutes, uh, she was like, yeah, so German immigration is rejecting all our requests. And then about 15 minutes after that, they came with the news. And the news was that apparently German immigration wouldn't allow us to recheck our bags a second time in order to make this trip to America because we'd have to go through passport control. And I guess with the current situation, Germany doesn't want people in Germany without a good reason. So I just had to scrap the whole flight plan. And they said, you know, you can try to rebook, but I went and talked to a lady and she said, yeah, really it's just the same flight plan. So I ended up having to get my own ticket. Um, but as of this point, I was at the airport. So I had to take my heavy bags, which I think were both overweight, uh, back outside. And then uh, Katya called a taxi for me, which was fine. Uh, except the taxi driver switched, um, and it switched to a guy that was hanging outside already and had spoken to me before I talked to Katya. So like this guy came up to me and said, oh, do you need a, he said like, you know, taxi ride, very cheap. And I said, oh no, thank you. I'm waiting. And then the same guy came up to me like five minutes later and he's like, oh, uh, taxi and I was like oh no I'm still waiting and then he says your friend and then Katya was like oh yeah this is your taxi driver um so awkwardly rejected the guy that was actually supposed to get me back um but 
he got me back. Um, and after that, I figured I need to relax a bit. So I went and played basketball um, in my winter boots that I was wearing. Um, it, well, I didn't play a game, I guess. I was just shooting. Um, surprisingly comfortable, actually. Uh, I guess the insulation helps. But yeah, uh, went and did that. And then after that, I came back and decided, or I figured, like, I need to get this ticket. So called my director and said, yeah, so this situation happened. And she's like, oh, this is crazy. And then we were on and off the phone because of like T-Mobile and I guess the rest of America not having good cell phone service that day. Um, and then it took about 45 minutes to get to the final conclusion of the flight that I have scheduled for this week, which is supposed to take me directly to Miami. Um, ended up costing more than the original ticket, and I don't know if we'll get that refund back because I'm not a no-show, but like, I don't really think this is a provision covered in their policy. So, uh, yeah, um, L's. L's all over. Uh, so, on Wednesday, I guess I kick-started the part two-ish of my time in Ukraine. Um, and it was just kind of awkward figuring out what to do. So, I went and I played basketball again on Wednesday just to, you know, occupy time, get back in better shape. Um, I played with these guys, um, they were like teenagers, I guess, um, but I guess, I mean, they weren't really that good at basketball, um, so I played with an older guy, and we actually played two against three, um, and we kind of killed these guys, honestly, um, but, I mean, it was just funny to, like, see their reactions, because, I mean, I was doing a couple of fancy things, but they were just, like, kind of mind-blown at some of the things I was doing out there, which... I mean, I don't know. I didn't, I don't, like, try to show off when I play sports. I just kind of do things. And it's always interesting just when people react to the things that I do. Um, but, yeah, so that was that. And then after that, I went to do a workout because I was like, you know, get got to get in shape. So I did a workout. And something happened that I think this is at least the third time that's happened here in Ukraine, which is, like, I was doing push-ups and I was taking a break. And while I was taking a break, an old lady walking by me on the track, like, put her thumbs up and said, like, good job. Um, like, old people are really supportive of you exercising here. I don't know. It's like, kind of sweet. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that happened. And I guess that kind of helped me through the rest of my workout. And after that, uh, Thursday, uh, I was relaxing most of the day, kind of telling people, you know, what had happened still. And then on Thursday, I ended up playing soccer instead of basketball, um, which was pretty cool. Um, scored a goal, so it was nice to get back to doing that a little bit. Um, and then <clears throat> um, after uh, playing soccer, there was a little kid walking by on the track, and he saw me with my football so I gave him my football, and then he took it and, like, tried to run with it, but into the soccer game. So his dad was like, okay, yeah, thank you. Um, and then after that, um, coming back, I actually ran into uh, the little girl that I mentioned a few videos ago, um, and her mom. Um, the little girl uh, from church that's, like, really sweet and adorable. Um, and I actually found out her name. Um, her name is Donna, which I think I heard before like the first time but i just didn't remember um but yeah uh i saw donna um she was like happy to see me um and she's like talking a bit now uh but all she kept saying was like her name and then the name of like her aunt or something um uh, it was really funny but yeah she was adorable and i talked to her mom we talked for like a solid 20 minutes um one of many long Russian conversations I had that week. Uh, and yeah, it was like cool. And um, I told her like I was leaving and then she said, oh, well, you know, she really likes you and stuff. So that was like a sweet exchange. Um, and then on Friday, Friday was a pretty cool day. I went out to uh, Hydro Park again. So I walked out there last or two Saturdays ago, um, but I didn't, you know, do very much. I was just walking, but I went out there to, you know, like 
actually do things. And I ended up playing basketball. Uh, so that was really cool. And I ended up playing basketball with an old EOC student. So he wasn't a student this year, but I think he was last year. Uh, and yeah, he said he had tested and passed all his tests and stuff. So it was like, yeah, it was interesting and yeah, unexpected to like run into a former EOC student. Uh, but yeah, like he was really cool and we played with him and his friends. Um, one guy, my teammate actually got injured like really early on, but he just fought through it, which was like brave of him. So, uh, I respect you, Artur, for that, even though you'll probably never see this. Um... But yeah, and then, uh, so that was basketball. Um, a few interesting things happened, though. So before I was playing basketball, um, I was just walking through a part of the area, just exploring, and I walked by this guy, and this guy, like, he just stopped me. He was like, oh, can I take a picture? And I said, okay. So when he, like, got another guy that was just kind of standing there minding his business, and he said, can you take a picture of us? So, like, we smiled, took a picture, and he said, oh, thank you. And then he just walked off. Like, that was it. Like, didn't ask for my name, didn't ask for anything else, just that. Um, so, yeah, that was a interesting exchange. And then roughly 10 minutes later, I was walking and by these two, like, college-age guys. And then they both kind of look at me, and then one guy just says, hey, hit me. And he runs past me and turns for a throw. So I threw it to him. And then he just um, starts talking, like, perfect English, and he's like, oh, hey, man, where are you from? And I said, oh, I'm from Miami, and, like, we exchanged a bit. Um, and he said, like, he's from Ukraine. He's just back taking classes and stuff. Um, but, yeah, just, like, another unexpected uh, meetup, and I ended up finding him on Instagram. Um, or I guess we exchanged Instagram, so um, that just... I guess got a follower <laughs> so that was cool um but yeah that was like another cool experience um but then after like this whole day i came back took a shower did dinner and then i ended up talking to the security guard back here uh at the apartment for about 30 minutes about like you know things happening in america going home and all this stuff and like i i don't know where like or how I was able to make it through, honestly. Like, I, ju I just haven't really practiced much Russian since the lockdown because it's just become next to useless because I almost never have to engage with anyone. Um, but I made through, like, two 20, 30-minute conversations two days in a row. And actually, I think it was last Friday and last week, but... Um, I've had another like 30 minute conversation with a guy and then that actually segues into Saturday where I had another very long conversation in the Russian. Um, so I did like in the last 10 days or so, I've done about two hours of conversation in Russian, which I believe is more than like at the rest of 2020 probably combined, which is crazy, but that's just how it's been. Um, but it's been cool to like, I guess it was cool to watch myself navigate through those situations. And I mean, uh, I guess God helped me through it because I really was not expecting to survive those conversations the way that I did. Um, but yeah, Saturday also outside of that conversation, um, it was like my, well, hopefully, I guess. Okay, not hopefully. That is not. Anyway, um, so Saturday was my goodbye at church. So pastor prayed for me um, twice which, I mean, more prayer is better. Uh, and then after that, um, Sasha came by later in the day and dropped off a cake that Diana had made for me. Uh, so thank you, Diana. The cake was good. <laughs> um, and after that, I went for a walk in the area. Um, there was actually a baptism that they did at a big church that I was thinking about going to, but um, in the end, I just kind of wanted to chill and save money because reconverting your money like cost more I, to than it is to uh convert it back um i don't think that made sense but anyway um yeah so i wanted to save money so i didn't go um but thankfully i was able to see a friend that i actually really just hadn't gotten to see uh at all because of like 
well, she works a lot, but we we're able to see each other and then we were able to say like a proper goodbye, which I think was really nice. So yeah, so that's it for week 42. Um, a lot of things happened. Uh, I wrote down a lot of details. I don't know. It's, it's a weird time. So peace. Hey.